We get a new look at the Dell Adamo. Lenovo has a laptop that can do yoga, and Jim Morrison wants his URL back. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's Tuesday, March 17th. I'm Natalie Del Conte, and it's time to get loaded. Dell released the Adamo this morning, which they're calling the world's thinnest laptop. They let us preview it on the CBS Early Show. Take a look. Natalie, good morning. Good morning to you. Yeah, this is one of those things everybody wants to see the latest and greatest, and Dell has it, huh? This is the new Dell Adamo. They're calling it the thinnest in the world. It's on par with the MacBook Air. It's 0.65 millimeters thick. It's a luxury product. I was going to say, a little expensive, especially at this time. Is it the best time to launch something like this? We're you know, about, what, I asked $2, Dell that question, and they said, well, this was in the works for about two years. And the fact that the MacBook Air sells so much yeah. shows that there is a market for this. You can see it's as thin as your newspapers. It's really tiny. It runs Windows, but when you open it up, it's kind of a luxury type of Windows. It just feels like you're in a more luxurious digital universe. Very, very it has this nice weight. tempered glass. Yeah, it's it's nice. for the more image conscious PC user like you. And we're talking about $2,000, right? $2,000. So it is a little pricey. Dan Ackerman has a more in-depth video review of the Adamo. You can find it at CNET.com. Here's another laptop that caught my eye this week, the Lenovo Pocket Yoga. It looks like it's set to compete with the Sony Vio P because it's about the same size. It will have one thing that the Vio doesn't have, though, that's a flippable touchscreen. We don't have any specifics on this bad boy, like price, storage, or release date, but it better have a 3G connection. I spent the weekend traveling to South by Southwest with the Vio P, and that thing was amazing. It was so tiny and light that I could barely feel it in my bag, plus I didn't have to depend on a Wi-Fi connection to get online because of the Verizon service. I wasn't sure if I was going to like using such a tiny laptop, but I loved it. So I will look forward to another one of this kind, although I hope it won't really be called the Pocket Yoga. That's one dumb name for a computer if I've ever heard one. Boxy may not work on the Apple TV, at least not without a hack, but it does work on the iPhone. The Boxy iPhone application was approved by Apple, but it only works as a Boxy remote, not a Boxy portal. You click the Boxy logo for play, pause, and stop. It also lets you drag it around the screen for directional control. As expected, the app is free. The makers of the Opera browser are releasing Opera Turbo. Based on similar technology used in Opera Mini, Opera Turbo Turbo uses Opera's own servers to compress data, mostly images, so that web pages load significantly faster. As you can see, the web page doesn't load as instantly as with Turbo. However, image quality does suffer. Opera hopes that users with slow internet connection will find it an acceptable trade-off. And while Opera Turbo will be available to download for now, the company says it will integrate the technology into future versions of the browser. According to the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, a record 2,329 cases of cyber squatting were reported in 2008. A case in point is JimMorrison.com. The estate of the deceased Doors frontman is fighting for the rights to the URL. They have taken the case to the World Intellectual Property Organization. The domain is currently owned by Rick Centieri, and it's a hodgepodge. If you go there, you'll wish you hadn't, especially if you're a Doors fan. Understandably, the Jim Morrison estate wants to take it over so that fans have a legitimate place to convene. Arbitration is still pending compliance checks with the World Intellectual Property Organization. A man in the UK used Google Earth to plot out his robberies. 27-year-old Tom Burge was looking to steal lead roof tiles so he could sell them. He sat at his computer and looked around Google Earth to find buildings with lead tiles, such as churches, museums, and schools. When he found them, he got in his car, drove to the buildings, and stole the roofs off of them. He managed to collect $140,000 worth of loot. He got eight months of jail time. Those are all your headlines for today, but don't forget that today is the day that Apple is holding their iPhone 3.0 conference, so stay tuned to CNET TV for the final word. And if you don't, we'll let you know what happened here on Loaded tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I'm Natalie Del Conte with CNET TV, and you've just been Loaded.